Did you know Super Mario Bros. is 35 years old? The NES version has a special place in my heart, as it's one of the first console video games I ever played. In honor of 35 amazing years and the countless sequels and other games it helped spawn, I decided to make this tribute hat using my 3D pen. I've been experimenting and trying new things with a 3D pen and fabric, and this hat is the latest result. In this video, I show how to make each of these pieces with my 3D pen, and then attach them to the hat using flexible filament. If you're interested in more details on using a 3D pen with fabric, you should check out my main video on that subject. I've linked that video at the end of this one and down in the video description. So many possibilities for using a 3D pen and fabric. And with that said, let's get back to the hat at hand. I can hear it now, the figures are gonna fall right off the hat. Just like this, right? I hope you stick around to the end of the video because I do some more testing like this. To start off the hat, we begin with our old nemesis, the Goomba. I start with aluminum foil molded into the right shape and covered with blue painter's tape to make the filament stick. This is the completed first layer of the Goomba, and you can see how rough and uneven it is. And now I move on to smoothing this layer with a wood burning tool. As with all the 3 pen videos you watch on YouTube, all of this footage is heavily sped up. This is the first layer after smoothing with a wood burning tool, and you can see that it looks way better. But after sanding, you'll see that there are still quite a few imperfections. This close up shows you a lot of the voids I'm trying to get rid of by sanding and wood burning multiple times. This is the final round of smoothing, and you can see that the surface really starts to look great here. The body of the Goomba comes next, and it follows a very similar workflow, so we'll move through that pretty quickly. One really handy trick when 3D penning smaller objects is to use some tack adhesive putty to hold them in place. Ah, it's time for a potent printable staple, using the two-part epoxy JB Quick to glue things together. Seriously, even just the sounds give me nostalgia. You'll see that I use two different methods to apply fine details to 3D pen creations. The first method is to make it separately and then glue or bond it onto the main figure, like I'm doing here with the Goomba's eyes. And it's at this point where the Goomba really starts to come together. But this was definitely my favorite part of the Goomba. And as I was doing it, I realized he's really kind of got a unibrow thing going on. Some may say he needs a makeover, but I really think this one feature makes the figure. But we gotta make him some feet, right? Yep, he's pissed that we almost forgot his feet. Oh wait, he's always pissed. Note the use of tack adhesive putty, and these are the smoothed out feet. The final detail is to add a small bend to make it look like he's taking a step. And then gluing the feet on using the one and only JB Quick, and voila, the finished Goomba. I was surprised that such a simple figure came out so well. Next, onto another diabolical enemy, the Koopa Troopa. And as you'll see, we end up spending a lot of time making his shell, which is actually pretty useful to Mario. Wait, could the Koopa Troopa be a double agent? Let me just head over to Wikipedia and add that to the page. After the first round of wood burning, this model has a lot more gaps and voids that need to be refilled with a 3D pen. Then after a few rounds of smoothing and sanding, we end up with a nice, smooth shell. Adding these stripes on the shell is probably gonna look way easier than it actually was. When freehanding these lines, it's difficult to get them straight and smooth. So I'm doing my best to control the 3D pen as much as I can here. But even then, you can still see that there are blobs and things that don't come out that well. So that means I'm gonna put a fine tip in my wood burning tool and use that to really clean up these details. It even works on these really thin stripes. So once again, it's the wood burning tool that saves the day. The Goomba reminded me not to forget the feet, so here they are. This time I just used some filament to attach them. Here's the finished shell and feet. And now we're gonna move on to the neck and head. Building up the neck is pretty easy, but the head ends up taking longer. Since it's pretty small, I ended up not using foil as the infill and just used filament to build up the whole head. 
So that's what you can see I'm doing here. I'm just drizzling filament out of the pen to build up the shape of the head. Once I have the shape the way I want it, I then move on to our old friend, smoothing and sanding. Here I'm just laying down the base for the two eyes. The eyes for the Koopa Troopa are made in a very similar way to the Goomba, but with one big difference. Now when you're making a 3D pen creation, you gotta get the mood lighting just right. Here I'm softening the eye so I can mold it and make it match the shape of the head. After I have the contours lining up, then I can glue the eye on. If I didn't mold the eye, it would just sit flat on the curved head and that would look really bad. Once the head and neck are both done, I use some filament to attach them. A little more smoothing, and here are the completed head and neck. Finally, we epoxy those pieces onto the shell, and we end up with the two mortal enemies of the Super Mario Brothers. Okay, Goomba just looks angry, and Koopa Troopa just looks sad. So probably my favorite little detail of this build is that we're actually going to use PVC pipe fittings to help make the green pipe. Here I'm just using a Dremel to cut off the right size of the fittings. These pipe fittings help me easily get the shape I need, but man are they messy to cut up. And we also have to do some sanding. Now that I have the pipes cut to the right size, we have to glue them together. Using some real pipes to make a fake pipe. Awesome. Once we have our blue painter's tape in place, we have to add a small platform for Mario to stand on, and I do that using cardboard. And there's the finished pipe. Let's now make Mario himself. And so for my tribute to the Super Mario Brothers, we're of course only going to make one of the brothers. Here I'm building up Mario's body in a similar way to the Koopa Troopers head, where I'm not using foil for infill, and I'm just using a lot of filament to get the shape of the body right. Which I of course immediately get wrong, and then need to trim off some excess using a hot knife attachment. Making Mario's head is business as usual. Earlier in the video, I had mentioned that there are two ways of making details on figures. For Mario, I'm using the second method, which is to actually 3D pen the details directly onto the model itself. And that's shown here, where I'm 3D penning the boots and his shirt directly onto the body. Some of the benefits of this method are that you don't have to shape the pieces to match the body, and you don't have to glue any of these extra pieces on. So for a figure like Mario, where there are a bunch of small little details, this method is way easier. But of course, we do need to do our smoothing. There are downsides to this method, one of them being it's much easier to screw up your models. What I mean by this is that you've already put a lot of time in making the head and the hat, but if you screw up big time putting the hair on, you're either going to take a lot of work to save the head or have to scrap it all together. Luckily that didn't happen here, and I was able to add the final little details of these tiny little buttons to finish him off. The Three Amigos. Oh wait, they're enemies. All right, we got to get Mario his step stool so he'll be safe. Mario or the Koopa Troopa were definitely the hardest to make, but I think the Goomba came out the best. What do you think? All right, now for the 3D pen and fabric fun. So we're going to take these figures and use flexible black filament to attach them directly to the hat. 
In my main 3D pen and fabric video, I talk about the details of why we have to use flexible filament. So if you want to know, go check that video out. I use tack adhesive putty to hold the pipe in place as I work around the perimeter adding flexible filament. And then just repeat this process for the Goomba and Koopa Troopa. And we're done. Here's my tribute to 35 years of the Super Mario Brothers. Oh yeah, as promised, here's me flipping this thing around. Those figures are on there. Alright, there's my Super Mario Brothers hat made with a 3D pen. So, I'm going to ask for your opinion. I can't tell if this hat is just silly or actually a fun idea. Now, I'm mostly trying to show what is possible with a 3D pen and fabric, so keep that in mind. These same techniques can be applied to a ton of other projects using hats, armbands, costumes, and more. If people do like this, I have a bunch of other ideas in the subject that I can explore. Now, YouTube being YouTube, I'm sure people are going to let me know how terrible an idea and project this is. If you do do this, I challenge you to propose a better idea or project in your comment. As I mentioned earlier, here's a link to my main video about fabric and 3D pens. Or, if you're interested in learning how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorials playlist which covers all skill levels. Finally, don't forget to subscribe for more 3D pen content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.